Hey everybody, it's your boy Zero for another Zero Gumpel review. In this episode, we're doing the Lightning Gundam from Gundam Builders Try. Gundam Build Fighters Try. Sorry about that. So, this is one of the weird Gundams. I did not know actually the origin of it. Like, obviously the Try Burning and the Build Burning were all based off the Burning Gundam. Vaguely, at least. But I did not know that the Lightning Gundam itself was not even based off a Gundam. It's based off a mobile suit that was based off a Gundam. <laughs> well, the Zeta Gundam, to be precise. It's based off of the Riga Z, which is honestly shocking to me. I was like, okay, so it has to be based off the Zeta Gundam. The face and all, but no. Riga Z. That was a shock to me. And thus, this thing adds to the bigger question. What officially makes a Gundam a Gundam? But before I go into that rant... Because I have that rant planned for another episode. Looking at you, Hazel. Yes, and normally I wouldn't have it on its spinning stand, but the batteries on that thing died, so it would be just standing there, not moving. So this is just a lot easier for all of us. So let's get into the review and talk about this really interesting looking Gundam that is technically not the full version of it. I'll explain later. So let's get into the review. So, here we have the Lightning Gundam with everything that comes in the box. The shield, slash prop stand if he's using the beam rifle. The beam rifle segment, I'll get into that why. The spare hand, it's a, you know, dynamic hand, so that's the only one you got to spare. The first beam rifle segment... A pair of bean sabers that go with the bean sabers in, that's in the side skirts. And of course, the extra long range sniper rifle beam, beam rifle segment. Now, what did I mean that this isn't the full one? Well, honestly, it's because it comes with a backpack for the lightning kit, the lightning pack, which gives it its full wing so you can transform into plane mode because, again, it's based off the Rigazi. And the Rigga Z can transform into a plane mode, and they decided in their infinite wisdom in here is to save quote unquote money by making us buy two packs, which costs us more. Because, you know, that makes sense. Because every time I keep trying to look for the lightning pack, it's like $80. And I'm like, nope. So maybe one day when they bring down the price and I can find it somewhere cheap, I'm going to get the lightning pack. Oh, I think I misplaced the sticker sheet on this thing. Huh. Weird. Oh, never mind. I think I put it away in my trusty away bag. I'll find out. Oh, yeah, I did. There it is. The sticker sheet for the lightning gun. We have... I used majority of the stickers on this thing because there weren't a lot of them. And... But, of course, some of them are just kind of ridiculous, like the stickers from the back of the foot, right here and here. Those pieces are the color closer to resembling the blue here. But, you know, to get that gray color, they just say, here's a sticker, instead of just making that piece gray. I, I don't get it. It just seems silly to me. Some of them are important, like the eyes, cameras, you know, the usual stuff. And I think up oh, and I did the verniers back here and on the back of the I guess the energy generator that connects to the ports on the shoulders I use those that sticker I use the stickers for the two parts of the shield and all the scopes of each part of the beam rifle and all its different segments yeah that's about all the stickers I used So, let's talk about, the, and of course, yeah, that's, that's it? Yeah, that's it. That's all the stickers I used. But as you can see, there's a lot of hard points here, the three millimeter ports. So, you can put pretty much anything that has a three millimeter port in here, and it would stick. Like, I don't know if this will work, but hey, these are experimenting. See, you can throw the shield on because it has the right, hole, the right peg. So, anything that has a three millimeter peg... You can put in all these little hard points. So, when it comes to customization, take 
like a 30 minute missions kit and go nuts with this thing. You can literally build a whole new set of armor for the Lightning Gundam from random parts from that stuff. Or any other Gundam kit you have that has stuff that requires the millimeter ports. Go nuts. Another, that's one of the greatest things I love about this thing. It is like, you can throw anything you want at it. The downside is, it only has one dynamic hand. And it's only this hand. I wish they had it for both sides, but hey. It's a ball joint, so you can pop in and out. Nothing really fancy there. And as for the gun, you know, be careful of the sicker. It does come up eventually due to age. I do love this gun, though. Because you can take... You can choose which barrel you want from, and, it, and it's easy to put this in. It's just a slide-in system. You just pop, say, just slides right in. Medium to long range, or there's a dude in five counties, and I don't want him to be around anymore. Range. I was all to call it the anti-material round, anti-material round range. They put you, the wall, and three walls behind him gone. And this is, you don't have to actually disassemble the hand to put it in. You just slide it in. Uh, so. And then you make sure it goes up to the shoulder. Uh, so. And then. Ah. I was wondering why it seemed weird. Yeah, because I just put it in the wrong part. I was holding it John Woo style and not regular. Doesn't work in reality, but looks cool in movies. And then, up. And then again, just slide this in. There you go. You can have it one-handed, or you can put the other hand through here. Same thing, as you saw, because you, it's quite easy to slide the hand in. It's no big deal. So that's always great to have. So... Let's do the articulation. Oop, move the gun. Oh. Like I said, the beam sabers are in the side skirts here and here. So let's get a better view so everyone can see. Yeah, right here. So as you can see, right here and right here. So you get a good view of that. It's kind of a pain. You know, realistically, I get it because, you know, it's a show. It's also based on, like, you know, basically really cool game they play, but I don't see the point of hiding the beam saber right underneath the side skirt. It should be on the outside at least, because now you gotta take the time to go digging under there, and by that point you could get a, you know, beam rifle around right through this dome. That's just not efficient. At least, or oh, put it in the arm! You have already have a rock, a freaking rocket launcher on there, or a beam rifle part in there. Use it! But, that's me renting on the realisticness of a fictional TV show. And of course, oh, the shield. Just another 3 millimeter port. Pop, shield's on. You can also have the, sh as you can see in the artwork, put the tip of the gun on the back of the shield. You can prop it up. Stuff like that. Nothing too fancy. So, let's pop off the shield and do some articulation. Alright, here's the arm bend. That's as far as your arm bends forwards. That's all the arm going as far as you can go backwards. Pretty far, because again, it's supposed to transform into a plane. And here's the arm all the way out sideways. The articulation in the arms are pretty good, because you can move forward, backwards, kind of like the build burning and the try burning and all the other parts of the build burning bloodline. But, because this, again, has to transform into a plane. So... It's going to have more articulation than a lot of other mobile suits. Pretty much if you can transform into a mobile armor or a plane, it's going to have better articulations in the long run than mobile suits that can't. Front's going up. The rocket kick. Pretty good. Paralyzed backflap, so you ain't going to get far backwards. That's neat. There's an e-bend. Again. Foot has articulation, leg armor goes up, foot, ankle armor goes up a bit, because again, transformation. 
so let's wrap up the review and summarize this whole dude's whole thing. Catch you in a second. In all, the Lightning Gundam is the most customizable of all the really, I would say customizable, but it's the most easily customizable of all the team tribe burning, tribe build entire line. Because it will take effort to mod the winning, the build burning, the tribe burning, whatever. Him, with all those 3 millimeter ports, you can go to town on him with the 30 mission, 30 minute missions kits. You can make him a ninja, you can make him a knight, you can do whatever you want with this thing. You can do that with a lot of Gumpla, but that takes a little bit lot more work. Finding the kits that are compatible, and if they're not 100% compatible, making them compatible. Finding different polycaps and all that other stuff. This is, alright, it has a hard point, let's throw something new on it. That is both incredibly lazy and incredibly efficient. I love it. It does feel like it's half a kit, but it's completely underrated in that way, because you really don't need the lightning bat to make it good. Like, I love my core Gundam, and eventually I will review one or couple, a couple of them and a couple of the armors eventually, but it's like, the core Gundam itself is nice, but it feels a little not complete because it is just the base form. You need the armors to show off the core Gundam's special shtick. Here, the backpack isn't necessary. It's kind of like a strike situation. The backpack is great, but it's not necessary to be a great suit. The strike and it's many as incarnation, modesting the OG one because we all know that wasn't great, was is a solid kit. Like this one in this situation, despite the fact that it's not technically descended from a Gundam, a Gundam adjacent, but it's mostly Gundam adjacent because it was supposed to be based off of mass, the mass produced attempt at the freaking Zeta Gundam. It's still a very well built kit. And I really did enjoy building it. As you can see, solid. The head's on a ball turn, so it has good articulation in the neck. You saw the arms are pretty good. It's really solid, and I would really recommend it. If you want a solid kit that doesn't have need a lot of bells and whistles, but you can make it quite literally anything you want from any of your spare kits if you just want to throw parts to it. Because if it has a peg... A three millimeter peg, you kind of can throw it into this thing, which why I love this thing. So if you want one of your own, pick, check out the link down below, Galactic Toys, that's where I picked it up from. If you want to support the channel, you know, use the links down below, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode while I'm going to review possibly, I, I know I say this almost every other episode, I'm probably going to do one of my master grades again. I haven't decided which one, but I have like three I haven't reviewed on the channel, so I'll figure out that later. Or I do have a couple of mono eyes I still need to build. Like I said, I'll figure that out later. Like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell for notifications, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Peace, and have a wonderful day.